my goodness, man. I'm going to tell you, I didn't think this type of defense existed in the NBA any longer. I was at all. I was excited. I was moved. I was intrigued. I couldn't believe what I was watching. I haven't seen anything like that, if ever, in decades. I didn't think it was allowed. The Minnesota Timberwolves, that was a masterpiece. That was a masterpiece original recipe. That's what that was. They shut down the Denver Nuggets offense completely from jump ball. They were all over them like a pack of wolves. Literally, like a pack of wolves. Every time they put the ball on the ground, they had to pick it up. They had constant pressure in their face the whole entire game. It was a beauty to watch a team play that type of defense in the NBA. Don't you know that's been my argument pretty much a long time watching the NBA? It's teams not taking defense seriously. Players not taking defense seriously. You always have the Ole defense. Uh, people don't want to be embarrassed. They just play just enough shadow defense just to say they were there. They put a hand up. Guy still hits the shot. It's not constant pressure. Players able to get to where they want to get to on the floor. It frustrated me for years. That defense right there, man, I was a kid in a candy store. I couldn't believe what I was watching. I'm still kind of excited about it. Talk about length. Talk about agitation. Talk about active hands. Talk about moving your feet. Talk about making people feel uncomfortable. This was going on the whole entire game. We're talking about the NBA champs here. Denver Nuggets. And the Young Bucks and the Timberwolves. Getting a first taste of real action NBA playoffs. Like I say, I don't know who their defensive coordinator is who inspired this type of defense or they took it upon themselves. What was the game plan, the strategies? But man, that was a clinic. That was a clinic. It inspired me. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. I haven't seen this in the NBA, this type of defense. I haven't seen a defense like this since I've been covering or watching been a fan of that you know what I'm, I'm gonna take I'm gonna take that back and it still beats it last time I seen defense even close to this obviously would be the Chicago Bulls back in they heyday with Dennis Rodman and all those fellas winning no championships that's the only thing I can come close to it because I was watching the Bulls very heavy uh, back in that time and they had some outstanding defense, defense that made you feel uncomfortable. They got up in you. But this right here, for 48 minutes, I never seen the Joker look so uncomfortable. The whole team was frustrated. It's like they forgot how to play basketball. They forgot how to dribble the ball, pass the ball. These are the champs, remember that. These are the champs. And they look like a peewee league team out there. Jamal Murray, frustrated obviously throughout the game. He think he should be getting calls. Every time he was dribbling a ball, it was one clip, I uh, wish I could find it, but it literally looked like two wild dogs fighting over some raw meat when he had the ball dribbling it and picked it up they were all over him I'm talking about active hands swatting at the ball he's just moving around trying to I mean it's like he was covered he putting his hands in the air looking for calls no they're not gonna bail you out see when you play that type of defense in the NBA specifically teams ain't used to that at all they're not used to that kind of defense you surprise them with something like that they ain't ready for that. Then you start looking at them, you know, wandering around, looking for calls, looking for the refs now. They want to be bailed out. They figure they so good, 
that their execution me, and scoring points all the time they ain't nobody can uh, ruffle us up like that. No, they have to be following us. They they gotta be doing something illegal. No, ain't no time to whine now. These young bucks are here, and I'm telling you, man, this defense, if they can duplicate this <laughs> throughout the playoffs, it'll be too much to ask. It'll be way too much to ask. But who can beat them with inspired defense like this? Nobody, nobody. They got the roster. They got the depth to do it. They got the players. Like I said, the length. They got the youth. Guys that are hungry. Because they literally look like wolves out there. There were nuggets. Uh, I never even thought of or imagined that y'all could get swept. Never thought of it. Somebody told me that going into this series, I said, you are crazy. Hey, set your price. <laughs> set your price. That's what I would have said. But now, that's not far-fetched. Not far-fetched at all. It all going to come down to game three, obviously. Where you really going to decide if this is going to be a sweep or not. Let me cut this off because this thing will just keep going off. Turn these alerts off real quick. Bear with me. But they're not at home anymore. They're going to Minnesota. If they play that well and that type of defense on the road, you can only imagine what they're going to do at home. And listening to Anthony Edwards, he's talking about he ain't taking the foot off the gas pedal. He said they punch, we punch back too. The team has took on his identity. Uh, the guy is vicious. He started off in that game not even being that aggressive. Uh, probably missed a couple of shots here and there, but when you got everybody rolling and the offense is crisp, ball movement, everybody getting the shots they want, everybody taking a conscious effort to stay aggressive. Like I say, man, it was a masterpiece. Original recipe, all the way down to the bone. Do you hear me? I never seen it like this before. And it's shocking. It is shocking. Wherever they turned, they were right there. Wherever they looked, they were right in front of them. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. And it's going to take a lot of energy. It's going to take a lot of sacrifice, like it did in that game, to continue this. If they're able to continue this, that was total embarrassment. It was. Uh, for a champion to go in that game that way. Not saying they weren't well prepared. Wasn't saying they wouldn't, you know, they got out coached. I'm not saying anything like that. But I will tell you this, they did not expect no defense like this. No, 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 no. They didn't expect that. That was unbelievable, man. Unbelievable. I got to stop talking about it because I can talk about this defense all day long. Uh, it was a beauty to watch. Like I said, my argument has always been in the league that players don't play defense enough. They don't take pride into playing defense. They don't take it as a personal battle to stop the man right across from you. It's like it's a lost art now. It's about just let you get, just let you cook. Let you get your groove on. I'll put a hand there. I'll play this shadow defense, but nothing too aggressive. And of course, the, the league uh, rules don't allow you to play that aggressive. But I tell you what, in the playoffs, you can get away with it a little more than a regular season. But even then, in the past, we didn't see no defense like this. Not at close. Masterpiece original recipe. Nobody in the world can play defense like this when they're that in tune and intrigued. We're going to breeze through the scoreboard. 
for the past couple of nights. Won't take it, take it too long. It's Weary Wednesday. I know it's hump day. You got to go get it. Well, my, 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 my. It was outstanding, man. It was outstanding. But uh, let's check out this first game. Cleveland Cavaliers and the Boston Celtics. Blowout. What's up with these blowouts and playoffs? There's a lot of blowouts in these playoffs this year. I don't know what the deal is with it, but teams are getting blown out. Boston won that game very easily. Uh, another game that Jason Tatum really didn't shoot it off the charts. Played well, but he didn't shoot it well. But Jalen Brown, some people starting to say now, what's going on here? Jalen Brown, the number one guy? He's been hiding all these years. Are they looking at the number one guy in Tatum the wrong way? Is, is that a mistake? Look like Brown is the bulldog here. I wouldn't go too far. I'm thinking his mentality is a lot stronger than Tatum's, but Tatum, I think he's got the more length and the more talent to rally his team and to make things happen more. But uh, Donovan Mitchell, he played a hell of a game. He was trying his best uh, to pull this win out for his team. But we'll take it at the top. We got Evan Mobley. He got 17 points, uh, 13 rebounds is his highlight. Eight for 12 from the field. Uh, pretty good game by him. We have to give him a round of applause. Coro, uh, next guy in line, 11 points. Uh, pretty much singled out on everything else. Uh, I, I won't say he done his job, but you know what? We'll give him a round of applause. He got double digits. He added uh, to the fray. He didn't just fall off the planet of Earth. He did pitch in. Anytime you get double digits as a role player or somebody just coming off the bench, plugging in, uh, you contributed. And you can at least get a round of applause off of that. Garland, uh, supposed to be partner in crime, and was looked at before Mitchell got there as the guy for this team. A lot of injuries with him. Uh, luckily, he's back and trying to stay healthy. They really need him in the playoffs. He didn't shoot too well from the field, at least from the three-point line. He was 6 for 15 from the field. Uh, 14 points. He had five assists. Garland's got to come with it. Uh, he could do better than these numbers here. We're gonna give him an iron and kind. When you're looked at as the guy or the guy next to the guy, you have to put up better numbers than this. You at least gotta get 25 to 30, especially if you got Mitchell uh, putting all his effort in 33 points, trying to lead this team to victory. He has to have a backup man and Garland should be his backup man. So being off is another thing but not unloading the clip is another. And uh, 15 attempts is not enough for you to just say you're off and you just don't have it that game. I expect you to uh, put more shots up. If not, grab more rebounds. Do something else that's gonna help your team out to win this ball game. You didn't do that. Because the only thing that stands out is the five assists for the 14 points. That's the only other thing that stands out. So Garland, you have to get it together. And the main man who put all his effort into this game, trying to rally this team, a new team he joined, which you know Mitchell wants to win a championship. You know Mitchell wants to be in the hunt every year. And ain't no guarantee that he's just gonna stay with this team for the rest of his career. I mean, he's trying to advance. And if Cleveland can't do that for him, then he's gonna go elsewhere. It's just plain and simple. But he had 33 points, five assists, six rebounds. Five for five on the free throw line. He didn't get there as much often as he usually does. Four for 11 from the three point line, 12 for 25 from the field. He definitely will get a star. Didn't get backed up too much, but you know, he had some guys in double figures in the teams. But like I say, if he's going to score 33, he need another guy at least 25, 30 right behind him. That could have been Garland. But he was basically a no-show. He couldn't get it rolling. So uh, that's bad on their part. And then when you look down at the bench, 
not getting too much there. It's like mostly starters, but not getting too much there. Let's go down here and look at these Celtics. But like I was saying here, Jason Tatum, 18 points, five assists, 11 rebounds, right? Oh, I skipped over three blocks. Have to throw that in. Couldn't hit a three-pointer. He's over five from three. Seven for nine from the field. So he was off on his shooting, but great players. And trust me, if you don't think he's a great player, just give it some more time. You'll see. He will go down as a great for the Boston Celtics. No doubt about that. Uh, but what I want to say what great players do is when they don't have a good shooting night, they do it elsewhere. Look at the blocks. Five assists. 11 rebounds. It just don't stop there all because you can't make a shot. And that's what Garland should have been doing. If you're a little off, get in there and grab some more rebounds. Get some steals. Try to block some shots. Pass the ball a little more. Get your teammates involved. Be a hype man. Do something instead of just shooting the ball and missing. Just a thought. Just a thought. Oh, should I call him out? We already know what this guy does. I'm not going to call him out because he's not even in double figures, but we know what this guy brings. I ain't going to uh, mention him. But you go down here and you look at Drew Holiday, right? He's got 14 points. He has two assists, six rebounds, uh, two for seven on the three-point line, six for 14. He went all on himself. He kind of was spotted around, and he had one of those cookie-cutter games. We'll give a round of applause for his effort, right? Oh, I'm sorry. We'll go back to Tatum as well. We're going to give him a round of applause. We're not going to give him a superstar. We will give him a round of applause. Uh, he did do his job. Uh, winning the game with what he's done, that's doing your job. Now, if they would have lost this game, he would have had an iron and a kind, no doubt about that. I don't care about the 11 rebounds, 5 assists, 3 blocks, 18 points, and then your team lose and you didn't get them over the hump and they need scoring from you. Oh, yeah, you would have been iron and kind, no questions asked. But your guy, your partner in crime, bailed you out because he had a hell of a game. But we'll get to him in a minute. So, yeah, Drew Holiday will get a round of applause and uh, Jason Tatum will get a round of applause as well. Uh, let's go down here to this guy right here, Derek White. I can't say enough about this guy. This guy's going to be into a lot of money. Do you hear me? This guy here, who wouldn't want this guy on their team? Who wouldn't want him? He's more than a role player. This boy's hunting out his own shots. 25 points. See, this is what I mean by committee. This is what I mean by helping your guy out that's next to you. Donovan Mitchell didn't have that. They did. And then you wonder why it's a blowout, 120 to 95. Better supporting cast. But yeah, Derek White. I'm going to give you a round of applause. I can't give you a superstar because we got to save that for the other guy. Uh, no, nah, you know what? The way he's been playing lately, it's hard to just give you a round of applause when you put 25 big ones out there with five assists, right? And you win seven for 12 from the three point line, <laughs> nine for 16 from the field. That deserves more than just a round of applause. Don't y'all think, quick hitters? That deserves more than a round of applause. And who say you can't give out two stars anyway? Huh? And they give that man a star. Give that man a star. 